<laughs> Where are we? <laughs> Where are I think we? we're floating, aren't we? We must be still in the tank. We couldn't oh, possibly. Oh, look who we are. What are oh, all these thank people you. doing here? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Actually, we have two things that we're talking about. The first one is the Flotation Tank Association. And we have a celebration with the FTA today because we're celebrating John Lilly's 100th birthday. And this year, is, that's his 100th birthday year, and there's a special event happening out. Can you all hear me? OK. Um, there is a book, Gateways Books and Tapes is out there, one of the vendors. And they are, are publishing a book that John Lilly wrote in 1967 called Man and Dolphin. And uh, when, when this is over, you can go check and ask Ivan when that book will be ready. But it's a very special book, and it's very related to us uh, in the tank world. The preface of the book, there's a double preface, and I'm going to read this to you, which I have to because I didn't memorize it. It's a preface by Dr. Scott Taylor, and he's the executive director of uh, an organization that worked with John Lilly on cetaceans for more than six years. And this is what he said about Dr. Lilly. Dr. Lilly was uniquely situated by birth and intellect to venture into multiple disciplines and was free to do basic research not driven by ideologies based on market concerns and belief systems. His family wealth enabled him to set his own agenda to pursue his lifelong question about the nature of reality relatively unhindered. So this is the, um, this is the character that invented this, what we all do. He was unhindered by what we all are hindered by. And that's pretty amazing. And so we here have an association having to do with something that nobody ever heard of until you know two years ago when people started uh, wanting to float more, until now all of us are involved in getting people to climb into boxes of salt water and float around. And scientists are trying to figure out why it's so good for us. All these things are happening based on this very um, unusual character. And I think it's a very honorable <laughs> character that we have to follow. This in this book, it's actually the story of the research of the communication project dealing with communication between humans and dolphins. And he. Uh, broke the rules of science, which say that subject and researcher should be separated. Because what they did is the researcher and the subject lived together for a year as they learned to communicate with each other and find ways of being together. And that was the basis of, <coughs> of John's work on language, you know, teaching dolphins to speak and uh, communicate with humans. So it's pretty an amazing book. The last 100 pages of that book were dictated in the back of a VW van for two days straight. And the time that was allotted for it was time that was dedicated to his research on tanks. So they've been united in a lot of ways. Anything you would say about John and when you first met him? Well, he actually was floating around, actually not floating, but he was uh, in the isolation tank. And it was incredible for him. He felt, wow, this is amazing. And he wondered if there was any sentient being that possibly was in a similar situation. And he asked a friend of his, and the friend said, yes, of course there is. Dolphins and whales, in fact, some of them have larger 
brains than we do. And so at that point, he decided to research dolphins for that reason. And so he moved to the Virgin Islands and created a tank where sea salt was going, I mean, sea water was going through it. And he, so he was at the same time both researching uh, the isolation tank and also researching dolphins. Amazing, huh? He was on the first board of directors of the Flotation Tank Association, Association and there was a meeting uh, that we were at as well. And somebody came in a with a report that there were centers out there where the water was dirty, where the temperature was way too warm, and where women were being harassed. He got pretty pissed off about that. And he said, we don't do that. Clean it up as fast as you can, and we did. He set that kind of a standard for us that we do what's good, we do the right thing, and we keep, we keep to best practices. And that's the second point of what FTA needs to take care of. The first one is to uh, start talking to each other, to have information that's sent out, and we have a website, flotation.org, to take care of that. Uh, I have a code for you to use in order to get in on it, and I'll tell you that at the end of this. But uh, FTA needs to uh, have, have a communication system, and I think we can do it on this website. And one of the things that all of us here, you know, this is a very smart group of people and very talented, and you all can contribute to FTA by inserting things, by putting things onto that website, and you'll find out how to do that. And also to have major communication among us is a very important thing. And the last thing uh, is, what was the last point, Glenn? When the research. The research, right. When we heard that uh, float on is initiating the research uh, to raise money so that what, you know, what happens to the solution that we're floating in? In order to find out, we're starting with basic research of what happens with Epsom salt in water. And I think that that was mentioned in the, in the talk this afternoon. And in order to find those things out, it requires a lot of lab tests. I think the numbers I heard, two of them, that we need to raise somewhere between $17,000 and $30,000. And the way that's being raised is by donations. Uh, we're having you join, those who will, when you join FTA at the booth, I think it's out there, uh, you get a 20% discount today, and 30% of what you pay is going into that fund to uh, pay for the research that we need in order to find out how, what is affecting the water, what's the best way to have the water working. Um, I mentioned what uh, Shoshana has done in the last The person who's really been behind all this happens to be my daughter, Shoshana. Are you here, Shosh? Okay. <laughs> anyway, she's the one who is behind raising all the money for Justin to do that research project. And she knocks herself out getting tablecloths for FTA booths and doing all that kind of work. And she's just been doing an absolutely fabulous job. And so I... <laughs> so all of you who can and want to, please join FTA today. Or if you can't get to it today because this is running late, it'll be open all day tomorrow. You can just be out there. There'll be somebody at the booth all day long. And we'd love to have you join us and keep this thing going. It's a big job we have to do. And let's have a good time at it. And if you don't oh. want to go to the booth to join, you can join by going to flotation.org.
And the word float is at the beginning of it, so it's spelled F-L-O-A-T, A-T-I-O-N. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs>